say about his church and the gates of hell itself will not prevail against my church. Nothing will tear it down because God's putting it together. And what we have to understand is he is our cornerstone and you are an integral part of this construction process. You are significantly important to how well this building is being put together. Paul goes on to say in verse 21, in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord. Christ laid the cornerstone. The apostles built upon that. The disciples built upon that. And we are being fitted today as a part of this kingdom, of this temple, this holy temple that God has decided to inhabit. Christ first laid himself as the cornerstone, as the church's foundation. 2 Corinthians 6.16 tells us, What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said. I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Know that this temple is still being built. And we're the pieces God is fitting into it, even as we sit here today. We're pieces of this beautiful thing that God is doing, this new thing, this this thing that is changing the world as we understand it. Don't be the missing piece. Anybody ever put together a jigsaw puzzle and have one piece missing? Just one piece. I spend hours, days putting, you know, Maybe a 5,000 piece puzzle. And right in the center, there's a piece missing. I haven't done that. I don't have the patience to put those things together. But I could only imagine how frustrated I would be if there was one piece dead center in a 5,000 piece puzzle that was missing. You wouldn't want to be around. But God doesn't want a piece missing out of this either. God wants the pieces of this temple to be fitted together because without you, the temple will never be complete. And so God is calling us today to understand this. What an awesome thing to consider. We are part of an eternal temple that will be God's dwelling place and we are called to worship him verse 19 so then you are no longer strangers and aliens but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household we are part of that you're no longer an alien you're not even strange anymore Most of us. But we are called and we are fitted and we are part of this thing, this great thing that we really can't completely understand right now, but it is so awesome. This thing that God has done. And it all began when Jesus became the cornerstone. When he laid his life down and died for us, and said, upon me, build this temple. We have been fitting this thing together, or I should say God has been fitting us together ever since. And he will continue to do that until the day that Christ comes back. And when that day happens, listen, the temple's finished. It's done. It'll be through. But until that day, we still are building. We can't stop. 
Because I'm telling you right now, as beautiful as it is, there's a whole lot of pieces missing. And as you sit here today, you can think of some of them that need to be part of this. And that's our challenge. That's our call today as a church. We need to com- continue to build upon what those before us have built upon. Now, Christ may come back today. Wouldn't that be exciting? That'd be wonderful. But if he doesn't, we got work to do. So I want to challenge you today to think of Christ as your cornerstone and realize how important that is for you and your family. We need to be fitted together. And let's glorify God as a people who come together, whom Christ has preached peace to. You know, we're the peacemakers in this world. The world doesn't know how to make peace. It has no clue. We have the message of peace and the God of peace, and his name's Jesus. And there will be no peace until the world acknowledges that and sees that. Heavenly Father, thank you. I just praise you for this time and this day. Thank you for these that have gathered. Lord, we just worship you and thank you for being the cornerstone of our lives. We thank you that you have called us to be a part of something much greater than us. And we thank you, God, for the challenge that offers us. And we ask God today that you would enable us to be that for you. Lord, you died for us, so it seems only right that we can work for you. Lord, faith without works is dead. So help us, God, to be a living faith at work, proclaiming, inviting, and sharing the good news that you died for us. And we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor for all these things we ask in Christ's beautiful, precious name. Amen and amen. We're going to stand.